same sort of thing that you saw before. You connect as ground. Choose the appropriate voice room. So uh, that's not any different than uh, the previous time, except I've now got the the transmit, uh, and I'm primed up as well. So some of the things uh, I want to go over again: make sure you set your airports correctly. I've got Atlanta departures and arrivals. I'm interested in. I've set the runways up in in here as well. Um, some of the things you can see going on at the moment: um, the blue ones are departures. This this guy will turn red after he lands. Um, you can control what shows on these tags through some JSON files within the VSMR plugin. Um, but this is what I found to be useful. And the fact that he has a tag on him means he is squawking mode Charlie um, and he's got the right squawk code. So this guy, sort of simulating real world, we wouldn't know who he is, although we could do target, acquire, and then click on him and it would tell us. So let's just hand this guy to Tower. Endeavour 5013, contact Atlanta Tower 119.1. Good night. So as before, make sure you've got your visibility center set to atlanta.viz katl. I won't do it because I've already done it once. Um, so the VSMR, as I said before, this only shows up for the airports uh, where I've got it configured. If we didn't have this configured, it looks uh, something more like this. I don't have the tag switched on right now. So let's talk about the departure list frequencies. You don't have flight strips like you do in VRC in uh, in Euroscope. You just have these departure lists, and there's a, there's a few things you can do. Some of it's obvious. Um, status is to track whether they're push, taxi, departure. Uh, and you should note you can press F6, and it brings up the strip at the bottom. And you can sort of do the strip marking in the same spots that you would in VRC, which does get shared with the other controllers. Um, but there's no way to actually push strips between controllers in Euroscope like you can in VRC. It's it's just not possible. Um, Ground Delta 1150 is on uh, deck C for Foxtrot 6. Uh, Delta 1150 Atlanta Ground, good evening. Taxi Dixie Lima to the ramp, good night. Lima, uh, we're going, okay. Lima to the ramp, Delta 150 anyway. good night. I can never remember exactly where those ramps are, so I'm sure we'll work it out. Um, working our way across, so the scratch pad you can enter quite easily. Type in here, you can click on the little uh, I, which indicates that he's IFR. Um, but that is just set up in the in the departure list configuration. That when you left click, it it brings it up. All of that's configurable. Um, you can see his flight plan here. You can set squawks if you want there. Um, what you'll notice is Euroscope has automatically decided that the uh, Smoltz 2 should go from 9 left with an initial climb of 10,000 feet and it's given him a squawk code. If it hadn't, you could do an auto assign and it would give him a squawk code. Um, this little box you can tick to say whether they've received their clearance, you can see their requested flight level, uh, and if you were going to give them an initial heading on departure, you could uh, set it in here, but if you click the dashes, you just get to. AHDG, which is just the default. Yeah, okay. He went over there. So what else is there to say? So you can switch these fields uh, around by clicking on the little S and deciding. So you can see here's the flight rule. Here's what happens on the left button and on the right button. Both of them open the flight plan dialog box. You've also got this little uh, radar screen, uh, which you can zoom in and out on and move this all around. More useful when you're on tower, um, since I'm on ground, it just gives me an idea of, of the arrivals and, and who's coming in. Um, so again, you can't pop out the strips, which is kind of annoying when you're on the text and then you want to look at a strip. You just have to hit F6 and, and look at it separately, or just bring them up uh, on, on here. What else to say? If the... Um, if Euroscope gets it wrong, you can change these temporary altitudes. You can just clear them out as well with the dashes, or just use requested flight level. Um, you can also change the SID. Um, let's say he didn't want to go nine left. You could uh, you could do something else in here, swapping the runways around. But the cool thing that this does, if we go to the um, radar screen, let's say this Delta 2025 is departing. If you right click him, it will draw the the whole SID, uh, and you can see he be on have grits. So you don't have to look at any table. If we were to change this to, uh, I don't know, uh, 8 left for some reason, there you go, you get Arnav Skinner. 
But um, what was he now? Nine right? No, it must be nine left. Yeah, nine left. So you can see it just changes the fly plane. It does this all the way out, and he does it for the stars. If you look at this guy, he's going to Memphis. Yeah, that's just the rest of his uh, of his flight plan. What else is there to say? Um, yeah, this little status drop down you can indicate whether they've got push clearance. Doesn't really apply so much in the US, especially when you don't have um, anybody pushing onto an active taxiway. Uh, and departure is really used for sequencing your departures, but uh, I find uh, controlling Atlanta, we never really have enough departures except for an event to need to sequence them in any sort of order. It's also worth talking about the other controllers that are online. You can message them with a with a double click, which brings up these separate. These are the equivalent of the chat windows in VRC. You just get these extra windows here. Um, other things you can do. Um, it's quite nice in Euroscope when you use a text alias. So if we wanted to do a PDC on Delta 2025, um, I've got one which is dot PDC X, and the X means I want to select the controller. So if you do that uh, and then press space, this might be quite small, but you see that where you'd have to put the parameters after the uh, the text alias code in VRC in Euroscope, it brings you to every parameter after you press space. So here I want the, the handoff to be um, approach A1H. So I can type A1H and then hit tab and it fills it all in for you. 127.9. Um, one thing to note, I did have to mess with the, the text alias as Euroscope cannot send a private message over a certain length. So I've had to uh, modify the PDC from the one you, you'd normally get with a VRC sector file. Uh, the last thing is uh, Euroscope does have uh, a voice ATIS built into it, but this does not work in the US. Um, there's another server of, of WAV files and things that needs to be configured um, to, to tell Euroscope which WAV files to play. To my knowledge, nobody set it up for the US, so you just have to use VATIS. Although one cool thing, you see the weather here. This letter is being updated from, uh, I believe, Tower have got the um, ATIS this evening, and this letter is getting updated, so there's no need to coordinate the letters for the uh, for the ATIS change. Um, and the last thing is all of the Q codes that you're used to typing in VRC, um, they, on the most part, they all work exactly the same. So hopefully that's given you a good uh, introduction into Euroscope for ground and tower, and I'll do an approach one after this. <laughs>